Hello 1P and welcome to another lesson on direct or partial variation. Uh, I do know the difference between them and we are going to try and get you to know the difference between them. That's our goal. I can tell the difference between direct and partial variation situations and I know how changing the situation changes the graph. So changing direct and partial variation. Uh, we're going to start off, can you pick out direct or partial variation? Uh, I'm going to give you three different situations here and we're going to discuss uh, how I decide whether they're direct or partial variation. So a plumber, oh and that should say a plumber not an plumber, let's get rid of that. A plumber charges $60 for a consultation fee and $30 an hour for the work they do at your house. Okay, so we got two pieces of information here, $60 and $30. Now, let's look, read the next one and see if it is any different. It costs $15, there's one piece of information, every time you take your dog in for a flea treatment at the vet. Okay. And then the next one says, a salesperson at the Gap is paid $60 plus 20% of every dollar she sells. Okay. So right now, I see a difference here. I've got this up here that has two pieces of information. This here has two pieces of information, and then the one in the middle has only one piece of information for us. So I'm thinking that whether it's direct or partial, the first and the third one are going to be the same thing, and the middle one is maybe going to be the other. So let's think about what it meant to be partial variation. In our last lesson, when we were talking about partial variation, we had uh, an initial fee, a starting point. Uh, it started on the x, on the y-axis up somewhere other than zero. Uh, so here, this thing here, this $60, that counts as our initial value. I'm going to call it IV up there um, because it says he charges a $60 consultation fee. So that means that if he comes to consult with us, uh, we owe him $60. If he decides that he's not going to do what we asked him to do, we still owe him that $60. If we forgot that we were having a meeting and we left, we still owe him that $60. That's the initial fee. And if he decides to work for us afterwards, he could work 10 hours or 20 hours. That $60 is not going to change. We just have to add more of this hourly rate on top of it. So let's see if we can make an equation for this. Um, we owe the plumber $60. And then we're going to add on to that $30. Uh, but we might add one $30 if he only works one hour. Or we could add on two $30. So I might have to times that by two if he works for two hours. Or if he works for three hours, I have to add three $30 or times that by three. Uh, the truth is we don't actually know how many $30 we're going to add. Um, so we're going to let that be a variable and say that it's going to change. So here's our equation for how much the plumber charges. $60 for that consultation fee plus $30 for every hour. So what we have here is the cost of the plumbing equals the $60, which is the initial value. I'm going to say IV. This $30, which is the rate of a change. And then this n is our variable. Now since there is both an initial value and a rate of change, this is most definitely partial variation. Let's take a look at the next one. It costs $15 every time you take your dog in for flea treatment at the vets. So if we take him once, it's $15. If we take them twice, it's $30. If we take them three times, it's $45. Um, so we're basically just adding 15. So we either add 115 uh, for one trip, or we add two 15s for two trips, or we add three 15s for three trips, which we don't know how many trips we're going to make. So rather than adding a whole bunch of 15s, we're going to say we're going to multiply 15 by the number of trips we took. We don't know what that is right now, but we're going to multiply it by that number. And what that gives us is the cost of treating our dog's fleas or our pet's fleas. Okay. Uh, now this is direct variation because we get the answer from just directly multiplying uh, the rate of change, and that's what this is, the rate of change, 
by our variable. So there is only a rate of change here, and since there's only a rate of change, it's direct. Now the last one, a salesperson at the Gap is paid $60 plus 20 percent, I'm just going straight from there, $60 per shift plus 20 percent of every dollar she earns. So let's use D for dollar she earns. So every dollar she earns, she gets 20% of, which means 20 cents on the dollar. And what is that? We'll let it be P for pay. Now once again, we've got an initial value, and we've got something multiplying the variable is the rate of change. And then here's our variable. So since we have both an initial value and a rate of change, this is partial variation. So let's take a closer look at the plumber situation. A plumber charges $60 for a consultation fee and $30 an hour for the work they do at your house. Make an equation, a table, and a graph for this situation. Now we've already made the equation. We said the cost of the plumber is $60 plus $30 and we don't know how many 30s we're going to add so we just let that be an N and say we're going to multiply 30 by however many hours the plumber stays. Now this, once again, is the initial value, and this 30 is the rate of change, and then this is our variable. Now the C is another variable, but it's going to be our dependent variable. because the cost depends on the uh, number of hours they stay. So since the this is just our independent variable, we're going to put number of hours first. It's what the plumber sets. And then once the plumber has set his number of hours, then we calculate the cost. So let's say 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Let's figure those ones out. So the cost for zero hours, we have already talked about, said we owe that $60, that $60 consultation fee, no matter how long they stay. So zero, we still owe $60. After one hour, we're going to owe 90 because I have to add in $130. After two hours, I owe 120 because I have to add in $230. And now hopefully you can see that we've got this going on. We've got an increase of 30 all the way along. So this is going to be 150, 180, and 210. Increasing by 30 every time. Now remember when we did this before we called this the change in our y and then our change in our x over here was just 1. So we could calculate our rate of change by doing 30 divided by 1 and that just gives us this up here, 30, 30 divided by 1. Okay, um, so I'm going to make a graph here. So I've set the scale for my graph. I'm letting each space down here be half an hour so that I take two spaces for a whole hour. And then each space up the side is $10 an hour, and or $10. And I've gone up to 260 up the side. So let's graph this. For zero hours, it's going to be $60. And then for one hour, it's going to be $90. And for two hours, it's going to be $120. And I can stop doing this all the time because you can see to go from one point to the next, I just have to go up three spaces on the graph and over two, which means I go up $30 and over an hour if we're taking into consideration the scale on our graph. So I'm going to go up $30 over an hour, up $30 over an hour, up $30 over an hour, up $30 over an hour. And there I've got my graph. I've even gone beyond what I had in the table. And now should we join the points? Well, yes, it's conceivable that the plumber might charge for half an hour. He might say, okay, I've gone half an hour, you can give me $15. So there is some valid information between these points. It isn't all valid, however, because the plumber isn't going to charge you for 0.72675 of an hour. They're not going to be that specific. So since it's not all 
valid, I'm going to join it with a dotted line to show the information, but then I know that it's not completely valid. Okay. Now remember, I could have found the rate of change on here too. Between any two points, let's draw in this little uh, triangle, I could find the rise and run from this point to this point. So as I move from this point to this point, I have to rise this many, or we could have drawn it on the other side. We could say as I move from this point to this point, I have to rise so many and then run so many. So how much have I risen and ran? Um, that's going from two on that scale to six. So from two to six, I've got a run of four and the rise goes from 120 up to 240. So that's 120. And remember our rate of change, rate of change equals rise overrun, which is our rise was 120 and our run was 40, which equals 30. Our rate of change is 30. We've seen that a number of different places now. We saw it there. We saw it up here in the first place where it says $30 per hour. And we saw it in the equation right there. We've got that 30 all over the place. So I'm just going to get rid of some of this stuff here. Because we're going to move on to the next section. 120, ju, ju, ju. Here, I'll write those back in, uh, 2 and 6, and this was 240 up here that I erased. All right, down, he increases, we're going to adjust this. What's going to happen to the graph? What's going to happen to the table? If he increases the consultation fee to $80 but leaves the hourly fee at 30 um, or he increases the consultation fee to $80 and the hourly fee to 40 So let's think about what's going to happen there. So we had C equals for both of these situations. We're going to create equations first. So he has a consultation fee, so we've got to pay him $80. But not just that $80, he's still got that hourly rate of $30. So $30 per hour. Uh, which we're going to say N represents the number of hours. Now our C over here, he's got a consultation fee of $80 still, and his hourly fee is 40, so plus $40 for the hour. So what's this going to look like as far as our table? Number of hours and cost. So we're going to go 0 to 5, 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So our initial value is $80. We owe him that no matter what. And then he's going to add $30 for each additional hour. So we can go up by 30s here. Uh, so that's going to be 110, 140, 170, 200, and 230. But what if he increases that um, hourly rate to 40. He's going to charge us $40 for every hour. So we're going to have the number of hours. This is what we set. What stays the same? 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. And now what we calculate is the cost. So it comes next. Um, again, for 0 hours, it's $80. If he um, works for 1 hour, we're going to add $40 onto that. So that's 120. If he works for 2 hours, we have to add $80 onto that, so it becomes 160. And you'll notice that our that our rate of change here, going up by 40 every time for our first difference, that's going to give us 200, 240, and 280. So let's put those on the graph. Now there's the first one where we just increased the initial value. Um, Everything just moved up by uh, that $20 increase in the initial value when we went from $60 to $80. Now it just increased it. So our line, it's up on the same slant. It's on the same angle. Uh, it's no steeper or no less steep than it was before. It's just moved up on the graph. Now if you look at the red line, this is the second case, this one here, where now we've increased it to 40 in between them. All of these are 40 now. And you can see in the chart, 
each successive one is getting farther and farther. We start at the same number and then this one's just a little bit bigger and then it's a bit bigger still and it's a bit bigger still so that we're getting farther and farther away. So how does that look on the graph? Well, the graphs start in the same spot but they're they're getting farther and farther away the farther along we go. There's a bigger gap between the blue line and the red line. So um, it's a much steeper line because the rate of change is greater. So the rate of change being greater gives us a steeper line. So let's look at our comparisons here. Increasing the unit rate and unit rate we're also calling the rate of change, the ROC. Um, what will it do on the table? Well, the first differences are farther apart. The first differences are further apart. And the graph, we had parallel lines. Um, the line just got shifted up. So the line is shifted up on the graph. It was still parallel, it was just up a little bit more. Now the equation, we used to have C equals um, 60, that should be a 6, we started with C equals 60 uh, plus 30N and when we changed the, oh shoot, this is actually backwards to where I'm doing what happens if we changed the, um, the, the first situation where we changed the initial value. This says changing the rate of change. Um, so what happened on the table, to the table, the n first different, the f numbers increase at a greater rate. So the first differences are getting farther and farther, are farther apart the first differences are larger. Now the graph, uh, the line is steeper. The line is steeper. And to the equation, we used to have C equals uh, 80 plus 30n and it would change into c equals 80 plus 40n is what we have when we changed the rate of change. So this number in front of the variable gets bigger. So the number in front of the variable gets bigger. The number in front of the variable gets bigger. Now I want to see, I want you to change this and I'm going to check on this. I want you to change it for what happens if we decrease the unit rate because this is just all going to change. The numbers are going to increase at less of a rate. Okay, So the, the first difference is going to be smaller. Uh, the line is not as steep and the numbers in the equation are going to get less or something along those lines. I want to see how you write it, um, how you change these into um, the, the unit rate decreasing. So this one was increasing and this one is decreasing and they're very, very similar, just one gets bigger and one gets smaller. Now changing the fixed value, that was where we changed the initial value, the thing that came up front. That was our first change in the table. Um, so the change to the table was that the um, beginning number, 
beginning number got bigger. And by the beginning number, I mean the number with the zero. The number with the zero. I'm not spelling very good tonight either. Take the E off the end of with. The number with the zero got bigger. Uh, I'm going to show you that on the table. So here's the table. These are two initial values because there's a zero here so that it tells me it starts there. So what we used to have back up here was zero and 60 and then when we changed the initial value we got zero and 80 for those two things. What else did we get? Um, what happened to the graph? It just got moved up. The line moved up. And I'm just going to say same steepness. And to the equation, um, the number by itself got bigger. And by number by itself, let's go over here, the number that was by itself used to be 60. So right here, this was 60 there. And now down in this equation, it's 80. So it's the number that doesn't have the variable with it got bigger. And that concludes this lesson. I want you to fill the rest of that in yourself.